This is where it all began. It was on December 1st, 1955, when a black woman, Mrs. Rosa Parks, after a hard day at work, stepped onto a bus and sat down. She later refused to give up her seat to a white man. She was arrested. She was sitting in the back in the black section of the bus, but blacks didn't sit while whites were standing. When leaders of the black community found out that Mrs. Parks had gone to jail, they organized. The man they chose as their leader was a young minister who had recently come to Montgomery after graduating from Boston University, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. This is a non-violent protest. We are depending on moral and spiritual forces using the method of passive resistance. Blacks boycotted the buses here for 381 days. During that time, they formed carpools, they walked to work, they finally won their demands of integrating the buses. They also formed a movement, a movement that would eventually change the entire South. Much of the credit must go to this man, E.D. Nixon. He was a union organizer here, and he used his labor methods to organize the blacks in Montgomery. That's the most important factor in, in the bus boycott, was me, my connection being with organized labor. And because of my connection with organized labor and the NACP for a period of years, that I was able to have a training that the average person right here in the city didn't have because they had never been around. I heard Reverend King talk on the second Sunday in August 1955, and I said to Professor J.E. Pierce, I said, uh, Jim, I said, that guy made a heck of a talk. He said he sure did. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but some days I'm going to hang him to the star. And I did. The buses are integrated now. So are the stores and the schools. Rosa Parks no longer lives here. She lives in Detroit now. But she came back last year to celebrate the 25th anniversary of her arrest and the success of the resulting boycott and the success of the civil rights movement that grew out of the Montgomery demonstrations. So many ministers and laymen, people of better means and those who had very little, unified on this one purpose, that it attracted attention everywhere across the nation and beyond. The movement throughout the South found its leaders in the black churches. This church, the Dexter Avenue King Memorial Baptist Church, was Reverend King's first pastorate. He and Coretta Scott King were based here during the turbulent first years of their fight for equality. Mrs. King came back to the church in Montgomery this week to address the Ride to Freedom tour, and she urged the group not just to look back, but to push for extension of the Voting Rights Act. Mrs. Rosa Parks was one individual who took charge of her life at that moment. And we see what happened as a result of her action. So don't say it cannot be done. We can't expect those few individuals who identify, who we identify as leaders to fight our struggle alone. No, if we want to win, we've got to do it, each one of us, ourselves. In Montgomery, Alabama, on special assignment, I'm Lou Davis.